Stay tuned for another edition of Mail Call. Your lip, your lip, your lip, right or left. All right, I am getting a deluge, and I mean a deluge of people sending me the article, Goodbye to Privacy. So uh, I need to address this, uh, and for some of you, it's going to knock your socks off. It's just, it's just going to blow your mind. All right, um, this is from my way, but uh, I also found it on other government and uh, news websites. So I mean, you know, it's it's out there. Uh, this isn't uh, you know no specialty thing or anything. It's it's well, it's an AP. It's an AP story. So I mean, you know, it's it's everywhere. Intel official say goodbye to privacy. Uh, this is by Pamela Hess, um, AP News, Washington. A top intelligence official says it's time people in the United States change their definition of privacy. Privacy no longer can mean anonymity, says Donald Kerr, Principal Deputy Director of National Intelligence. Instead, it should mean that a government and business properly safeguards people's private communications and financial information. Ken's comments come as Congress is taking a second look at the Foreign Surveillance Intelligence Act. Lawmakers hastily changed the 1978 law last summer to allow the government to eavesdrop inside the United States without court permission, so long as one end of the conversation was reasonably believed to be located outside of the U.S. The original law required a court order for any surveillance conducted on U.S. soil to protect Americans' privacy. The White House argued that the law was obstructing intelligence gathering. The most contentious issue in the new legislation is whether to shield telecommunications companies from civil lawsuits for allegedly giving the government access to people's private emails and phone calls without a court order between 2001 and 2007. Some lawmakers, including members of the Senate Judiciary Committee, appear reluctant to grant immunity. Suits might be the only way to determine how far the government has burrowed into people's privacy without court permission. The committee is expected to decide this week whether its version of the bill will protect telecommunications companies. The central witness in a California lawsuit against AT&T says the government is vacuuming up billions of emails and phone calls as they pass through an ATT switching station in San Francisco. Mark Klein, a retired AT&T technician, helped connect a device in 2003 that he says diverted and copied onto a government supercomputer every call, email, and internet site across access uh, on AT&T lines. Wow. What do we do with this? Uh, government supercomputer? Hey, wasn't that a conspiracy just a few years ago? Oh, yeah, 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 by golly, that was a conspiracy a few years ago, wasn't it? Well, yeah, here it is, straight from AT&T's mouth. Government supercomputer. Apparently it's real, apparently it exists. There you go. I mean, <laughs> what 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 can you say? I mean, there it is. You know, another conspiracy theory shot down in flames is the truth, huh? See, see that the, the funny thing about conspiracy theories is that there's always a negative truth to them, and 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 a lot of times they actually end up being the truth eventually. Yeah. Well, here you go. You know, because I, I, how how many? I mean, for years. Oh, there is no government supercomputer where they're keeping track of everything we do. Yeah, well, <laughs> according to AT and T, there is. Wow. And of course, our privacy uh, is is definitely under attack here. Um, I can kind of see the government's uh, need to listen to uh, Muslim terrorists on their cell phones. I can I can see that. But. Um, the bad thing about laws is that they never, ever write them specifically for the purpose they are intended. They are, they are almost always full of wording that is so broad that it can include anything and anyone. Now, I have not read this exact legislation, so I don't know how it's worded. But I think it's a safe bet to say that it doesn't specifically say, now, only Muslim terrorists can be listened into on their phone calls. Now, I'd, I'm pretty sure the bill probably doesn't say that. So... Essentially, Big Brother is probably listening in. Now, I, I mean, you know, I've, I've heard clicks on the phone for years. 
sounded like somebody picking up an extension phone and listening into my conversation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good bet that was government. Um, you know, of course, I have nothing to hide. Uh, you know, they know where I live. Um, you know, uh, they want to listen in on my private conversations. I really don't give a shit. But um, uh, the thing of it is, is that uh, you know, I, I've I have suspected for a long time that the government was listening in, and well, now, boom, here it is, folks. Uh, the government is listening in, for real. And they got the supercomputer, which for a long time was considered a conspiracy theory. Oh, they ain't no such thing as a government supercomputer where they're storing all of our information. Yeah, well, <laughs> according to AT&T, there is, so there you go. So, uh, considering the, the volume, I mean the sheer volume of email I got concerning this, I thought, well, I'll go on ahead and throw a video out there on this before it gets dark, and I have to switch to low light. For some reason on this cam, when I use low light, man, it uh, kind of slows the cam down. But anywho, uh, getting back on topic here, um, this does uh, forebode a, uh, a definite change in the way we will look at our privacy and the way the government looks at the term privacy. Uh, you're not apparently granted total privacy anymore. Uh, that appears to be gone for good. So, um, on marches the New World Order, huh, folks? <laughs>